This is the Krill Cast. I'm Chris. And I'm Will. And it is 2005, so you know what that means. Will's still playing 2000, 2002. Still playing Halo 2. Yes, and, I uh, am. <laughs> a different game caught no his eye. What was exists. it? What was the other game that caught your eye in 2005? So, in 2005, another game caught my eye. It was Call of Duty 2. So this is not a game that I ever played on live, but it was something that I played through with my brother, and we were really big into this one. And also, I think the uh, Call of Duty 2, the big red one, also came out this year, in 2005. Um, and anyway, like I like World War II. I like my, you know, I grew up with my grandfather telling me stories about it. Um, I, I enjoy reading about uh, World War II, and it was, I don't want to say fun playing through it, just because it was a really dark piece of history, but I, I enjoy going through like that perspective uh, of the gameplay. And at the time, again, like. It, this like really showed you what games were capable of. It was much more realistic than Halo. Uh, it wasn't that super realistic, obviously, because it's like <laughs> pretty old game. But it was more realistic than Halo. Like Halo, you can basically just jump into a fight and take like a thousand shots, and you, you heal instantly. This one was like you only, you can only get shot a couple times. And I believe this is the one that had like this one sniper level where you're essentially in a building and there's people like coming through and you're like looking through a window and they're coming down different parts of the street. And you have to take them out. Uh, it was very hectic, uh, and it really made you feel claustrophobic, and always on the like on your heels. You never felt like a you never felt overpowered like in Halo. Um, so that was an enjoyable, and it, was, it just it was really enjoyable playing with my brother. I will say like I, I always was upset that I didn't have like a plasma grenade or like the tanks never felt as powerful. <laughs> but you know. I accepted it because I realized it was supposed to be more realistic, but it was really cool. The first but Call of Duty I, game I played was Modern Warfare, so I well, never, played, was, yeah, never played two. That game blew my freaking mind because I had played all of the original Call of Duties until that point. I will say that this game sparked a debate with my brother and I. was like how I would I always argued that Halo was really realistic, and he's like, no gun has an ammo counter like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do, but they will in like 100 years. <laughs> go on all right so my a lot of people are gonna be like it's an expensive game chris but i do have it so fire emblem path of radiance is top three fire emblem games for me of all time i love fire emblem path of radiance i still own my copy i've never parted ways with it i owned it when it came out i was one of those insane people that bought a gamecube specifically for fire emblem path of radiance and then ended up with all the other games I had, like the Legend of Zelda Collector's Edition and all the other stuff. But this was the reason I owned a GameCube, because I am an OG Fire Emblem fan, and I love the series. And this was my most hyped game for the GameCube. When I found out Fire Emblem was coming to the GameCube, I about crapped my pants. Because I was like, what? <laughs> I was so excited. And this game did not disappoint, unlike Sacred Stones. Um, I went from Fire Emblem to Fire Emblem Sacred Stones to this... And this felt like the natural evolution of Fire Emblem from the Game Boy Advance game to this in 3D with some 3D models. But, you know, it wasn't like the most technically advanced graphics you've ever seen, but it was mm -hmm. Fire Emblem. It doesn't need to be the most technically advanced graphics you've ever seen. And no. the CGI cutscenes are something to behold, let's put it that way. They're quite good and they're quite fun. And they're voice acted, which was a first for the series. Um, and after this game, I went back and played all of the Japanese games on ROMs back when ROMs were more easily accessible and translation patches were insanely easy to find mm -hmm. on Serenus For Seren Forest.net, the forums. They had really great patches, and they said, hey, go find the ROMs, but here's the patch for you to play it in English. I was like, yes, I will do that. So anyways, I love this series, love this game, top three for me ever. And basically, if you have a GameCube and you have an ability to obtain this, I highly recommend it. If you don't, mm -hmm. I understand it is a very expensive game. Find some other way to play it. It's worth your time. Hopefully Nintendo eventually yeah, it makes puts it like on Chris the money. Switch. I, I got it as a gift when it was $40 back when the GameCube was still new. So anyways, next game, I got this on the 360. This was like the first 360 game I bought with my own money. Need for Speed Most Wanted. And it was the Platinum Hits Edition, and I still have my copy to this day. Still plan to trade it out for an actual, like, regular, you know, green copy. I don't like the Platinum Hits Edition, especially not the 360 Platinum Hits. But this is my favorite arcade racer ever made. 
This th there's nothing in my mind that has ever come close to or topped this, even with the ridiculously stupid story that goes with it. <laughs> the Blacklist 15 is one of the, f the stupidest and awesome game uh, campaigns of any any racing game I've ever played. I like, realistically, no racing game touches this in my mind. But at the uh, recommendation of Mr. Racevic, I will be playing Need for Speed Carbon again, just to see if I recognize the game elements from Carbon coming from this game, just to see how good a, a game Carbon actually is. So okay. I have to let you guys know what I think, but from 2005, this game still holds up. I can boot this up in an Xbox 360 and play it, and I still feel like I'm playing something that's coming out now. You know, Maybe not the highest end budget, but still something that could come out today. And, this is a great game. I wish they'd remaster it. I'd buy it in an instant. I'd play through it all the way again, and I would play it multiple times. And I loved the fact that you could start with a car and finish with that same car at the end with the amount of upgrades you could actually put on mm -hmm. that car. I remember picking like the gumpiest looking car they had available as a starter and never replacing it. <laughs> I had this gumpy car with some ridiculous upgrades on it, and I finished that game with that gumpy car. All right, anyways, definitely if you never play this game, pick it up. It's on Xbox, PS2, GameCube, Xbox 360, and PC. I'm sure there's some really great mods on the PC version, so take uh, pick your poison, play this game. It's worth your time. As always, I'm Chris. And I'm Will. And we will see you. On next cool cast. Bye, guys. What's the worst part about prison? <laughs> the Dementors. <laughs>